district here on our way to visit the Danish DJ producer and drummer Thomas Baffel. Along with his band Who Made Who, and as a solo producer and artist, he's had a string of releases across a host of labels, including Secretly Canadian, Friends of Friends, Get Physical, and Compact. <laughs> I guess the first piece that, that was very important was the Atari um, sequencer. Yeah. When we got it, it was really old already, so it was like horrible like for production, but it, it, it worked and we made our first record. It's like a little screen and, and a keyboard almost, and then you put a floppy disk, and uh, it's only black and white and really pixelated, the, the screen, like a screen like this, and then a sampler with and the sampler had like 16 seconds of mono samples in total. So it was like very limited what you could do. You know, even an old iPhone can do more than that now. So any, I have, a, you know, some old delays and uh, compressors and stuff. EQs, I never use it. I, no. uh, I think what I focus on actually adding as much uh, artboard synthesizers as possible. The Monopoly, as I mentioned, is I think the go-to uh, synth or piece of equipment at the moment. But it changes over time, but it's mainly, it changes between synthesizers. There's no other equipment that's important. Obviously, monitors are very important, and I also like the sound in, the, in here is very important, but that's mostly for mixing. Uh, for the creative process, it's the synthesizers. Yeah, and what is it about mixing? It's also really hard, I think, because you can you can sit in the studio and rave about so, like this is oh I'm amazing, you know this sound. Uh, why? How did I get this? And then you go home and play it to your wife or whatever, and it just sounds like shit on the speaker, you know, the little speaker at home. Yeah. It's uh, it's very different. I think it's nicer now where you can have an idea and test it out in one second. You can just drag it in the computer and listen. How does this drum sound sound? No, it's not good enough. We still use, com you know, synthesizers and uh, and you know, real instruments. But a lot of a lot of stuff is done in the computer, and I think it's really good for the creative process. That it's much faster now. And it when I listen to old records, I picture the the guy playing the tambourine for a full song, and I, I just feel really sorry for him because it's so hard playing the tambourine. Like, <laughs> even though it's easier making it a drum beat on a drum machine, you could say it also takes much more an effort to make a good drum beat on a drum machine. And your album is Salt and Sea, as I understand, I mean, which was one of your most popular and successful records. I mean, a lot of that was made on the move, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just with a laptop? Yeah, it was. The thing is, it, uh, I got this um, email from a guy in LA and he was like, hey guy, do you want to release something on my label and I thought that was maybe cool. And he was like, maybe we should do something. And then I was sitting in a hotel room somewhere, I started some track, that sounds good. I sent it to him, yeah, let's work further on that. And I went to LA and lived for a while and and finished actually the album over there. And I only had I only had like a like a really really cheap table that I bought for like 40 bucks. But those vocals are recorded directly into uh, the computer at uh, Nina the singer's home because she, she, she was really busy and she was getting married and she didn't have time to finish them. And then she just like sung them in the computer and sent them. And I was like, yeah, they sound a little rough, but I'll just make them work. They had this special vibe to them because they're made like they were. So the whole, I think the whole theme of the album was kind of DIY, made at home, made on the run kind of. And it really made sense actually because it has a lot of playfulness that I'm still when I listen to that one, that album, I'm really happy about it. I should just stick to my laptop because it's so fast and you can try out a lot of stuff and I try to make all the music like instantly on the laptop and then afterwards if we feel like it, we add like with Human Who we add drums and we add extra synthesizers, analog synthesizers. Um, but uh, the best process is starting up only on the laptop, not add something just because you can. It's kind of boring, it's not rock and roll, it's like nine to five kind of. It's putting the kid off and, and uh, going to studio and picking up the kids again. That's basically how we do all of us. 
I know sometimes you can't just go to the studio and, and make music and make good music. And I know that by, by now, so I never take a break, actually. I always like, I start at, at 9 o'clock or 8 o'clock, I just keep on working. And at some point, maybe not Monday, but maybe Wednesday, there's something good coming out of, of the studio. And that's, that's how I work. I think a lot of other people to start with a guitar or uh, just a melody in vocals. But I, I'm really drum bass because I'm a drummer. Uh, and sometimes I just think of a concept when I'm flying or whatever. Often I start with finding a lot of nice synthesizer sounds, finding a lot of like doing a good drum beat, actually making the, the whole document ready for producing without even having anything in it. So you pick all the sounds a bit yeah. like uh, a painter picking a palette of yeah, colors. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then that will be your set of tools for that track. Yeah, yeah. I like to be able to instantly make something good instead of doing a lot of stuff to make it good afterwards. Uh, and we might change all the sounds, but but uh, when the document is is when I make the docu document, you can like play keyboard and it sounds amazing. You can make a bass line and it sounds good. And the drums are already mixed. So, it, so if you just like do the right things, you can always you can actually record it and and release it. I'm done. <laughs> I think a lot of all the good songs I made are made within one or two hours. And after one or two hours, they actually sound 90 or 95 percent as they are when they are released. The way I work is that I. If it feels right, I don't do anything else. Or the ones I'm happy for, like broken glass, uh, pulsing, like that, that's that's two of my favorites from my own catalog. Broken glass, we made, we had a whole day where we did a lot of shit, and then the last hour I was like, so let's do something else, and we tried something, and it was like, this is good. Try to sing those lyrics, and I play around with them, and within an hour, we had almost the finished version of uh, broken glass. But when, when the core feels right, it's often a very good song. And then I don't need to do that much more. You can also like the Monopoly synthesizer. I played a lot around with it. And still, there's some stuff it does where I don't really get what it does. That one, you know, playing around, finding the right sound and like just nerding sounds. I, I, when I fly, for instance, sometimes I just sit creating uh, presets, sound presets like play around with synthesizers, adding the right uh, effects on them. So they're ready to when I to make a song later. Put yeah. into a document yeah. to yeah. start with, yeah. Because the right, the right sound, you know, the right synth sound can like make a hit. I always have to mention Daft Punk. They've been, I think, you know, after I heard there's this small record store in Denmark that's closed now called Loud. One of the guys played Daft Punk to me and I was like, what is this? It's it sounds like Herbie Hancock, I thought. Why should I buy this? It's like old funk. And then two months after, I was like, this is crazy good, and I had to buy it. And since then, I've been a big fan. It's so similar, and it's kind of groundbreaking, and it still works, you know. That's great, man. It's been really uh, inspiring and interesting <laughs> to you. hear, and uh, to be here in your den yeah. <laughs> at the heart of the controls. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any advice you would give someone starting up or if you found yourself in this situation or if you were telling your son, look? Yeah. Don't. I think I think and I think that's very pretty actually. I really I'm not the guy that's kind of missing the old days or whatever. I th I th I th in many ways they kind of suck, you know, sending your demos via CD and mail, <laughs> and you know that sucked. Yeah. Um, but uh, and I, I really like that and also see that, you know, in the whole scene that you can be from Guatemala or Poland, at the outskirts of Russia, and you can be a very successful producer. It only takes a laptop, and you can, you know, get a cheap laptop and the cheapest program, and you could actually make a number one hit. That's that's how it is now. And and my advice would be like getting getting like some good speakers, obviously, so you can mix. Uh, and maybe a sound card, and then a computer. And it's, it's so, you know, it's a very little investment to follow your dream. 